be in pain all the time, too, because it weakened it. You know, I mean, if you're in pain, you can only run so fast. And this is what they wanted to do, was slow us down from anything that we ever tried to do that might expose them, which they really, they hated me and Eric getting together because they didn't trust us. They always thought we was up to something, and we was. He took care of his end of it around the famous people, and I took care of my end of it around a little bit of poor people. But then I went to Texas in 77, and it took seven more years because we couldn't find anybody to trust, and we just kind of hanging out, pretending to practice for some videos and stuff and until we finally had Interpol to pick out a federal agent. His name was Jerry Smith, and he's the one that had my sister rescued, and she married his brother, Daryl Smith, and she's been undercover ever since, so I can't say a whole lot about her. I know when I hear the voices, because I get the voices, and most organized stalking victims get the voices, and they are very cruel. And I do hear them say, oh, does that hurt your feelings? Does that hurt your feelings? You know, you're fat, you're this, you're that. You know, it, it, just all kinds of horrible um, psychological types of abuse. And physical abuse, I was sexually assaulted on more than one occasion. What else... Um, do they do to keep you down? I know that I've read that satanic ritual abuse, um, a lot of malnutrition occurs when you're under satanic ritual abuse, and flashing of cameras and things like that. What else occurs to keep you under their control? Now, you said you were, and you and other victims were sexually abused. Is that occasionally? Was that all the time? Um, were you deprived of education? Were you not allowed to go out? Organized stalking victims are often held down. Their jobs are taken away from them. Their financial resources are taken away. I know I've had my clothes cut up. I've had personal property destroyed that I couldn't replace. What else occurs? Yeah, uh, they do stuff like that. I had a hard time of keeping up my pictures in my house because they have master keys to everything anyway, and they run in and out of our house all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I've had clothes that just flat disappeared and uh, out of my closet and it's just something they do. They had they wanted to play mind games with us and I called it mind games when I was real little but when I was growing up I, I realized, man, these people are dead serious. This ain't even a game to these people. And uh, it was just nonstop and it was nothing for somebody to jump out of a car, take a picture and get back in it because it leaves little children wondering, who is it? Why did he do that? You know, and uh, everywhere we went, the conversations we heard, it was because the Nazis went where we went. And they would have conversations they wanted us to hear about how perfect their child is, you know, and how, how bad we were. So everything in life was a setup. There wasn't nothing going on that wasn't a setup. So it was made to make you become a failure so that you would always be under their control. Right. It was part of their mind control to be constantly insulting us. To, of course, hold you down and make you feel worthless. Right. And you over you overcame that. You come forward. How did you How did you do that? Well, faith in God was one way, but having that moral a moral support that there was other people just like me out there that didn't know that plans were in the making and we couldn't tell them, you know, that we were going to help them someday. And so I had that moral support, not just from some famous people, but from some good poor people locally that was involved in helping to gather up little bits of evidence and little bits of clothes because everybody was naked before they got to Butler County. And we had to get clothes on them to get them back home. And... Uh, when I lived there with a mass grave was my first, my, the first driver that would take people down the road a little bit was named Anna Mann. Anna had a son that was put in the state hospital up here in St. Francis County, which we always heard the experiment with people. I don't know much about it, but it got sent to Joplin as far as I know. But her son was sent there for life because he fired a shot at a squad car. Gee, everybody wanted to kill them cops for what they were involved in. You know, we didn't see no big deal about that. Why put a kid away for the rest of his life over it? But uh, she was my first driver. And the, the reason she was willing to be the driver 
and get people down the road just a little bit to the second driver is because she wanted revenge for what happened to her son. What happened to her son? They, they put him away for life because he fired a shot or shot at a, a squad car. Well, I think he's a teenager when that happened. His name is Mans is all I know. You know, you had mentioned people were naked before they got to Butler County. Once you were in the satanic group, if you were kept, what were you allowed to wear? Because I know you're not given anything, you know, you're not given any type of nice clothing, really, or probably not even a nice place to sleep. Tell, tell us about that. The clothes that were given to me was because Helen's mother was a maid, and people give her stuff all the time, you know. And it's a good thing they did because that was my clothes. And things didn't have to fit right as long as I had something to wear. And so I learned to sew, like hand sew when I was real young, and, and I liked it. And I'd sew on buttons, and I fixed up everything the best I could. But uh, my clothes would get ripped up, and they'd be sewn in the bottom of the closet. And, you know, and it's just something they did to me to let me know that I didn't need something clean. I actually daydreamed about smelling like baby powder because I was... I actually was just, you know, a dirty kid for a big part of my life. And uh, it was nothing for one of them to walk by me and grab a handful of hair and chop it off. So most of my school pictures, my hair was pretty obviously gappy. Yeah, I know at my, uh, my gang assault that my hair, they did chop a huge piece of my hair off. And at the time, I didn't realize, I, I don't think I, I knew I was dealing with evil, but I had no idea that I was dealing with people who are Satanists and who are trying to run this country into the ground, you know. And they had always mentioned, and in the voices, they always talk about, you know, through voice to skull or microwave hearing, they always talk about, we like people who are filthy, you know, we don't want you to clean the house. Um, wear your filthy clothes, don't take a shower. Um, I guess this is all done uh, mind control to get you to feel even more worthless, right? Right. They, they want you to feel worthless, yeah. We were always told we don't deserve nothing. We were undernourished. We never had proper food, but I lived the drug addicts. They didn't care if there was food in the house. They didn't care if there were shoes on our feet. They didn't care if there was wood for the old wood stove. They didn't care if there was medicine. They were not real parents. We were of no value whatsoever. A child never is to them. They are sexual objects. You either enjoy them for your own pleasure or you make some money off of them in porn or prostitution until they die. But they have no value. They're just kids. And that's what they call it, kids. So there is no value in... In, in children with Satanists, or as we all know, they do murder children. If a Satanist couldn't sell one of you into prostitution or make money off of you, what would have happened to a child? Would they have been shipped out, returned to their home, or would they have been killed? But what would happen? You know, these, these organized stalkers, I have seen pictures of children, infants, burned with electromagnetic weaponry, and I really want the audience to know what's going on out there, because these people are evil as they come, and I've never seen a greater evil. Um, they have no compassion for even a child or a, an elderly person. They're totally against this country and our beliefs, and extremely disrespectful people, and I want people to know that they will hurt pets, they will kill children, uh, adults. It doesn't matter to them. What happens? To, what would happen to a child if they couldn't make money off of them in your circle? They, they feel or watch for a lifetime until they got around to killing them. And if you can't trust somebody to reach out to, to give you some help, then you just keep your mouth shut until they do get around to killing you. And in the meantime, they make sure you suffer because they keep the pressure on you. They don't let up. And if you start talking, you, and like in my lifetime, I couldn't just sit around and tell people, yeah, I was a satanic victim. You couldn't do that because if you said that, they come after you real thick and try to run you off the road. And they remind you, keep your mouth shut. You ain't allowed to talk about that. Satanism don't exist anyway. There's no such thing as it. You're crazy for saying that. Nobody's going to believe you. And they really put it on a stick. But, you know, I spent a big old hunk of my life with people 